so in the previous uh, session, we looked at uh, the parameters related to the two wire transmission lines. And we could understand that, right, because of uh, certain features, right, uh, we can bring in the fundamental circuit elements such as resistance, right, capacitance, inductance, conductance, etc. Now, so uh, we understood one thing here, right? Uh, I think this point we already made it clear. So, what is the dominant mode? What is the dominant mode of uh, communication for a two wire transmission system, right? If you remember, I, I, I think I mentioned about the TEM mode, right? TEM mode is the one mode you, uh, with which, right, there will be the transmission that is happening with this, right? Now, so we see that uh, there are inductance and resistance, right? They are uh, shown along the line, right? So, right, I'll just show you the diagram again. So you see here, the R and L are connected along the lines, right? So that means R and L together can form impedance, correct? So let's write that point. So that means, therefore, the impedance, again, we have to take a standard here. It's not like the complete impedance because uh, if the transmission line is uh, uh, like of infinite length, right, then the in impedance becomes infinite, right? So we don't want to uh, go with that convention. We want to measure everything per unit length, okay? So, so that, Whenever you uh, want to calculate the impedance of a line of certain distance, maybe 1 meter or 2 meters, 10 meters, you can simply use this per unit length measurement and you can multiply, correct? Multiply by the length to get the actual impedance, all right? So, impedance per, uh, all right, so this is unit length. Maybe it can be most of the time it is per meter, okay? So, per unit length, denote it as Z, right? If you have resistance, that remains as it is. Uh, the impedance, or it, it's not exactly impedance, it is called as the inductive reactance. What is the characteristic of inductive reactance? If you remember, it is a positive quantity, it is complex quantity plus J, complex quantity, and the reactance can be measured by using omega L. Right? So, why the L is the inductance, why the omega comes into picture, because we uh, might have studied this in the basic circuit concepts that the uh, inductive reactance is directly proportional to the frequency, right? So, it's directly proportional. As if you have a zero frequency, see the omega is zero, so zero into L is zero. So, omega will be zero. So, L has no effect. There is no reactance offered. So, in other words, I, I can put it in this way. So, inductance offers zero resistance, right? It's not exactly resistance, but our common understanding is, is in terms of resistance, right? So, I'll, I'll use the word resistance here, right? Though it is actually not allowed. So, inductance offers zero resistance for DC signal, direct current, where frequency is zero, right? So, that, that's what is the meaning of this, right? So, that's what is this. Uh, R plus J omega L stand for. Normally, this is, uh, so it's ohms per meter. Normally, we measure in that way. But anyway, so let's not use uh, uh, the units over here. Uh, again, I can see in the uh, circuit representation, there is a G conductance and the C. Right. So now, capacity. Right. So if at all, we try to write the required uh, admittance, right? So this is called as a shunt. This is parallel. So shunt admittance, right? Uh, again, this is per unit length, right? So can you tell me the, okay, I'll give a notation. Maybe you can write a, a, a gamma for that. Let's try to write a gamma. Shunt. Okay, so this is the shunt. Uh, admittance. Now you see, if at all, uh, I'll try to write a basic here, just, just to recall. If at all, I try to write a z here, parallel z, this is 1 by g minus j omega c. 
but I'm not writing Z now. I'm writing one by Z. Right? That that's that's the point. So because of that, now you see, right? I'm supposed to write that one by uh, G. You don't have to write a one by G now because it's direct admittance. So you can simply write the G over there. G. Right? Now, so the minus J omega C when you have right. This becomes a plus j omega c because I am writing the one by right, right. So because of that, I can directly write this as one by j omega c, which is positive. That is just because I am writing the admitter. Again, so in this case, this becomes a positive j. But what is the characteristics of x c? X c is the capacitive reactance. So how do you write the capacitive reactance? It is right. It is negative. Right, it's minus right j, right? Uh, and how do you calculate the xc value? Xc is equal to 1 by omega c, correct? So now you see the fundamental characteristic is that make omega 0, make omega 0 here, the xc becomes infinite, correct? Right. At the same time, if I make this omega as infinity, very high frequency, that denominator is infinity, so this makes your xc as a 0. Now you see the, uh, the relate, uh, relative uh, comparison between uh, the xl and xc. It's a reverse now. So when the frequency is 0, that is a DC signal applied, means the capacitance offers infinite resistance. It will not pass the DC signal to pass through the capacitor. Okay, but if you see when omega is infinity, omega infinity means very high frequency signal, correct? Pure AC you can call. Normally, when we say our power supply is 50 hertz, ideally speaking, this is not a AC, proper AC because proper AC is like frequency is infinity. Very high, highly oscillating signal is what is considered as pure AC. But anyway, so this is this is partial AC what we get, right? Like 50 hertz, 60 hertz signal. That's fine. It, it's going to pass this signal for sure because there is some omega. Right, but when omega is equal to infinity, you see that xc becomes equal to 0, right? So, capacitor passes the pure AC signal, but it blocks the DC signal, right? Again, we are taking this directly from the fundamentals of circuits, okay? Circuit analysis subject, okay, right? Now, so we have, so what are the various parameters here? R, L, G, C, R, predefined. We know that what are the resistances, what is the inductance, conductance, etc. and the capacitance per unit length. Now we need to have some technique, right, to measure some of them at least, right. Now let us see using the parameters of the line. So as of now the parameters known uh, are the diameter and the distance between them, correct. Yes, yes, yes. We know these parameters, right? In addition to that, we might use some other parameters also, uh, something like uh, maybe the uh, uh, flux density, I should be able to know. Then only I suppose to calculate that. Right, right. Something, so, something like that will be used. Okay, so the first one. So uh, let's try to calculate the inductance, right? So uh, L. I'll write a direct equation. If you want to calculate the L for this given system, it has to be mu divided by pi into natural log Ln two times the capital D by small d. All right. So actually, this is uh, inductance, right? So measured in Henry's. So it's per meter. So per unit distance, right? So this is so this is L per unit distance for any given wire you can calculate so let me write what are the parameters we are using here one is this mu it is called as a permeability right so uh, are you able to recall the what do you mean by permeability Uh, no problem, no problem. You see, uh, this is something like, uh, it's a word which refers to, uh, say, a magnetic property of any material. Now, you see, uh, we are using a conductor. Definitely, 
the conductor is a magnetic material in the sense it behaves it though it is not a permanent magnet whenever current flows it becomes a magnet you can consider like that right so it's a magnetic property of that material and you uh, this represents a measure of how much flux is produced because of a magnetizing current right so this is a measure of that more permeability means you are able to generate more flux okay so less means lesser so it depends on the flux that is generated by the magnetizing current okay so just remember that so q is permeability i'll write in bracket for your reference the uh, measure of the flux i can write a density density produced by Again, it's just a uh, measure. Now, you, if you remember, uh, the mu is actually measured by uh, two various parameters. One is mu r into mu naught, right? So, where the mu r is specific to uh, what do you call? It's a specific value to the uh, material. That's a conductor. Which conductor you use? Copper has a different mu r. Gold has different mu. R. Is it okay? So it's the relative yes. it's a relative permeability and the mu naught is the permeability of free space so this is permeability of the free space all right so the mu naught value can actually be measured directly we know that it's a constant so it's not going to vary this is uh, 4 pi into uh, 10 to the power minus 7 henry per meter all right now you see actually the i can, I can actually rewrite this l now mu is equal to mu naught into uh, mu r right if if at all you are uh, using a non-magnetic material, right? So then I can actually rewrite the mu r equal to one. Let us say, right? Non-magnetic materials do exist. You can still use them, right? So in that case, mu r becomes a zero. So the numerator becomes only mu naught. So, so one of the standard way to write this is four. Uh, uh, there is a pi in the denominator that gets cancelled. Okay. So four into ten to the minus seven. 2 times d by d, right? So, this is the uh, reduced version of that equation, okay? So, using which you can measure the L if required, right? We know the parameters of uh, uh, the, the dimensions of the two wires, right? Okay, similarly, uh, there is another standard equation for capacitance. Per unit length. So C is equal to, this is pi epsilon divided by, this is natural log of 2D by D. Again, this is unit is farads per meter. Now, so if you remember, what do you call this epsilon as? Have you heard what is called as permittivity? Right? Ah, it's a permittivity. Now it's a basic. Uh, no, no, no problem. Absolutely fine. So it's it's one property of uh, uh, some sort of dielectric medium, right? And uh, it 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 actually allows. It actually uh, measures. It's a measure of the uh, electric flux that can pass through this all right or it actually depends upon the amount of charge that can be deposited on both sides of the device uh, of this material like like if you consider this as a dielectric material i have a parallel plate capacitor right so how much flux passes through this right uh, it, 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 it is a property of the material to allow the electric flux to pass through this right again that depends upon how much charge it allows the conductor to store on both the sides 
so you can actually consider it in any way right so i'll just write in a bracket so this is a measure of the electric flux passed by a dielectric material so as usual this has to be a product now epsilon is equal to epsilon naught into epsilon r so epsilon naught is the permittivity of a free space right so any idea what's the value maybe we studied in uh, electromagnetic circuits or electromagnetism somewhere 8.854 into 10 to the 12 carats per meter okay so that is the permittivity of uh, free space and uh, definitely the epsilon r is the relative value relative relative permittivity All right. so now let us substitute everything back so the c becomes equal to i this epsilon naught into pi into that one okay whenever i multiply so again uh, this becomes i think 27.78 into 10 to the minus 12 into epsilon r you can keep the epsilon r as well because most of the time the material will have some uh, epsilon r right there is no uh, material without any epsilon r so a other than free space if you are considering any material there will be epsilon r so we are not eliminating this like uh, what we did in the previous case for l we remove the mu r saying that okay this could be a non-magnetic material right but here we cannot do that because of the reason that any material you consider will have some epsilon r. okay so that's why so this is ln of uh, 2e right all right so using this we can calculate right so for measurement of uh, the uh, resistance right you have right the standard equation right rho l by a so anyway i'm not going to write that that's a very simple equation we can use it right uh, but you need to consider the exact unit length for that right it's not measured like in this fashion right so like that anyway we'll come back to that later right so i'll directly move on to the next topic that is the characteristic incidence Okay, this is characteristic impedance. So the standard notation for that is Z naught. Right. So in the sense, uh, we will be able to measure some sort of impedance. Right. Normally, the impedance is how do you measure the impedance? Normally, right. It's not uh, say. I don't want an equation using R and L and C. Okay. Other than that, if I want to, or even resistance, let, let me say I have a, say a conductor. This is a conductor. Okay. Though I represent this as a resistor here, it's a conductor. Simply I connect this to a battery. Okay. Plus and minus some voltage V I apply. Yeah. So you have a current, say I. Now, how do you measure the, uh, uh, the here it is not ir uh, yeah. so you apply ohm's law and you measure the resistance is equal to right resistance is equal to voltage by current right so whenever you use the transmission line right there is one character one imp one impedance term coming into picture which is going to be a ratio of the voltage at any point and the current at that Right. So normally, if you since since you have uh, let, let us say you are applying the uh, AC signal transmission. Okay. So let me say this is how the voltage looks like. Let me assume. Right. Between the two wires, you measure any point. Uh, so point by point, you may measure. Right. Between these two points, you measure the current. Again, it's not required that you have to have the same waveform for the uh, current as well. Let's say you have a current like this. Normally, okay. Normally, the voltage, uh, the sorry, the frequency remains same, right? But the amplitude might change like this, okay? 
so maybe this value you see at the same point if i measure the current current value will be something like i'll change the value okay so let us say uh, say this is the value of the voltage this is the value of current at a given point right always i know that from the basics of circuits any voltage divided by current you get a resistance line right now you see the same concept i should be able to apply to uh, this transmission line right to measure some sort of uh, what you call uh, some sort of uh, uh, it's not resistance because there are inductance and capacitance coming into picture so you should be able to measure a an impedance right so always i try to measure an impedance now so therefore so this is defined as uh, i'll directly write out the, the thing it's a ratio of the voltage uh, current voltage uh, sorry on, on the on the transmission line current right so voltage value of uh, wave to the current value of the wave in this case the wave refers to either voltage waveform or the current waveform okay uh, on the transmission line right so let's try to write an equation for this that means the z naught can be calculated as the voltage okay i'll write a wave first so that makes sure that you know that we are measuring on the voltage wave so voltage wave value divided by the yeah current wave well so that means uh, provided you were uh, the the parameters in terms of the physical uh, measurement like the diameter distance between the line etc is not going to change in other words if you are having a uniform transmission line right the there will be a particular value of the characteristic impedance associated with that right most of the time you will see that this is going to be a complex number right there are chances yes you will get a real number but most of the time it's complex because voltage will be written as some v angle theta correct you you know the polar representation of uh, voltage right so maybe some in in electrical we apply this more right electrical measurements so divided by i can be written as i angle some other uh, theta so i'll call phi right something else so you see that there is a phase difference so in other words the v is equal to v e to the j theta right and i is equal to i e to the j phi so it's anyway i can see that there is a complex uh, calculation happening right so the result is normally expected to be to be a complex number right now uh, under some special cases we have this becoming real right so what is that when it happens real is because it's going to be real because you don't have a phase associated with them in the sense v is simply v i is simply i okay that is going to happen now i'll tell you the huh. phase is zero is actually in the physic in physical terms right it's not phase zero phase gets cancelled that's all okay there will there may be a phase but phase gets cancelled both have the same phase okay right that means right uh, uh, it means the uh, transmission line is lossless the the physical meaning i am telling you okay as of now we don't know what is the loss how to measure it etc but since we brought the term right when it is going because what value z not can take normally complex but real under some case what is that case whenever the transmission line is lossless lossless so lossless means both the resistance value r right and the conductance g will become zero because loss is who is going to cause the loss in the circuit resistance so there should not be any resistance then this is going to happen right so it it, it makes sense right okay right so let's try to write that value so uh, z not is normally complex 
right? But uh, becomes real if the transmission line is lossless. So lossless means the G and R become equal to zero. So G in other in some other sense is a another copy of R only, right? You just have to take it as in a different format. So both of them become zero, then that, that's what is happening. So you see uh, what's, a, what's the equation for Z naught then? Z naught can be simply written as this is R plus J omega L divided by G plus omega C. That's the equation you write. But right, uh, this is the general equation, most common equation, right? But for lossless, what happens? What you have assumed, right? If R equal to G equal to zero, so it is no more Z naught, it is simply right uh, it's l by c but actually later on we'll prove that uh, the z naught is okay for lossless we'll have a proof it's this looks like uh, uh, it, it may not look proper now because you may see that this is this is going to look like l by c but actually it becomes a root of l by c okay uh, let me check can i give a proof right now Oh, my, I made a mistake here. So it's here itself, it is root, right? So I missed a root, my mistake. Right, 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 right. So that makes a sense, right? So, right, right, correct. So R naught is equal to, I'll call this is R naught, root of L by C. Okay? Yes, so that's how we know. So everything, yeah, so remember in every equation, R, L, G, C values are per unit length values. Right? So, fine. So, uh, if you want to look at the practical values, and anyway, I'm not going to write here. So, if you have a two wire transmission system, normally, if it is lossless, you are going to get a R naught value anywhere around 350 to 550 ohms. Okay. So, that's the standard value uh, uh, in, in the industry. Fine. All right. So, let us try to uh, write R naught, we have a value. And uh, let us try to substitute and calculate. Uh, okay, let's try to uh, calculate the L and C value which we got earlier, right? So previously we wrote the L and C equations, correct? So one is L and one is C. So let's try to substitute that to calculate this R naught. So that that gives us another equation to use when we solve some problems. Okay, so using L and C, right? I, anyway, let me give some equation number over there so that it becomes easier for us to trace it out. Okay. So the, the final equation I want, okay, one is this. This is a, I'm going to call this is one, and there's a modified, this is two. Okay, now let us substitute using LNC from equation one and two, right, in three. I'm trying to write the R naught value, so this has to be equal to, uh, even the other values we can write, but anyway, ultimately we are trying to uh, simplify that, okay? So it's fine, even if you use the other one, that's fine. So that is uh, L, L is equal to 4 into 10 to the minus 7. Uh, it will not be cancelled, I guess. 2D by B, this is L, right? Divided by, uh, I think we write 27.78. Uh, 10 to the minus 2, right? times the epsilon r divided by this whole thing divided by ln 2d by b this under square root ln will come out of this correct and uh, i think 
So we can simplify 4 into 10 to the minus 7 by 27.78 into 10 to the minus 12 under root. I think this comes to be around 120. Okay, the simplification. And you can see that there is a epsilon r in the denominator. So that comes in the here. This is under root. And the ln comes out of the square root, right? So that is ln of 2d by d. Again, right? So this is the ohms, right? Again, I, I again I am seeing I'm seeing that this is the ratio of uh what you call uh the it's it's like I'm measuring the resistance. Uh, again, now you see this is this is not ohms per meter. Right, right. Okay. So right, it's at a given point. So we will be normally representing this as a simple ohms, not per meter. Is it okay? So Anyway, let me uh, think what else equations we need. Yeah, we need one more thing that is actually the velocity of propagation. This is already we have studied in the electromagnetic wave. So I'm directly using it here. So it applies any since it is a TEM mode of transmission, anything you studied over uh, over there uh, when you studied the electromagnetic uh, waves will apply here, right? All the wave equation can be applied, but we are not using every one, every equation we studied over there. Okay, so one very important parameter is the velocity. Velocity of propagation can be measured here. So V is equal to, if you remember using the inductance and the capacitance, you can calculate root of LC, one divided by root of LC. Okay, now let us see. Uh, if I am able to substitute the values of L and C once again. All right. So we can substitute the values of L and C. Okay. So that means let's try to bring this. So this is 1 divided by under root. So L is equal to 4 into huh, minus 7. Huh. Uh, the ln ln cancels, right? Oh, anyway, let me not write that. So this is the uh, one term into the 20, right, 7.78 .7 into 10 to the minus 12. Uh, ah, okay, so I'm multiplying, so into epsilon, perfect. All right, now you see what happens when you take the square root of this product. Okay, so square root of that product and you write it one by that, right? So that comes to be three into 10 to the eight. What is this number? Right, that's the velocity of light. Okay, correct, perfect. So this is root epsilon r. Now I have to justify this. I'll use a small letter c for this. Okay, so because I use a capital C already for a capacitance. Capacitance, so this is c divided by root of epsilon r. Now you see, Right. So ideally, we think everything propagates with the same uh, velocity as light because, right, it's an electromagnetic wave, right? But you see, it depends on the epsilon r value as well, right? Good. So that's what is our conclusion from this. All right. So also we can uh, try to write because uh, so this c comes from another equation normally. Again, this is not uh, related to this, but we already have studied this. So the value of a small letter c is actually calculated by the parameters of the free space, right? So that is root of epsilon naught into mu naught. Okay, so this is the this is the equation which actually gets you into the number 10 to the 8 meters per second. Right. So now this is the value, right, which we have to substitute over here to get that. All right, so now let's move on to the next topic. Again, this is another important topic in the transmission line, right? So in the, in the parallel wire transmission line, so this is the voltage and current, right, in the transmission line. So slowly move, we are moving deep into the concepts of the transmission line. 
All right. So let's try to recall something already we discussed, right? Transmission line consists of two conductors, some cross-sectional configuration, right? And we expect that it is uniform wherever it's uniform wherever you cut the transmission line. So the the small d value which you had calculated earlier, right, is expected to remain constant throughout the transmission. Wherever you cut, it should remain same. That's the one fundamental requirement for everything we discussed so far. Right. Right. So now a small length of the line. Uh, let us say uh, we try to represent the, the line is along z axis line is kept along z axis let's let's go back to recall why it is z axis because i think we, i gave one yeah right so wave is assumed to propagate along z axis right so in if that is the case i should not have any electric and magnetic component along that right along that wave that's why so let us try to uh, consider uh, in that way okay so so first let's assume let's write the assumption once again assume uh, the the transmission line is uniform in terms of the cross section area of the conductors of the conductors used so we use the conductor and this is what is the case all right okay now let us try to consider a very small length of the conductor so i'll draw one portion of the uh, the line which we considered so far Okay, so this is what it is. So this is the part which where I don't consider the resistance and inductance. So now I write okay, there is a resistance. Okay, and there is an inductance. Now somewhere here, let me take out a drawing. On one side of that, I am going to have say B. And the other side will have the capacity. Okay, since the second, uh, the conductor which is below is also very similar, you don't have to represent the inductance and capacitance right here, all right? Okay, so uh, this is the, uh, okay, let me write the parameter first. So C, this is G, there is R and L. Okay, fine. Now, so for the representation purpose, we have a connection between these two, right? But uh, Practically seeing, it will not be present. Okay, so what we write, uh, let me try to write, denote a i here, right? And again, I'm going to write the i of z because as you move along this line, the z changes, correct? So if you are considering the current as a waveform, right? So th maybe this is what you will be able to see, correct? So at a point, I may have zero current, maximum current, least current, negative current, and so on, correct? So you can see that it, it's going to vary. So I have to give a notation. What is the value of current at Z? That's why you see this is I of Z. Again, now I just, uh, anyway, I'm going to write it later, but I think I mentioned that. I'm going to consider the uh, transmission line of very small length, right? So let me try to uh, denote that over here, right? So uh, I'll try to give a very small notation that is dou z. Z is the distance. Z is the uh, uh, what you call axis. So small if a small change in z is dz, right? Dz or dou z doesn't matter. Okay. 
Okay. Now you tell me what I should write here. This is the current flowing at a point z plus dou z. Are you okay? Makes sense, right? Because a, i is a variable. As you move along the z axis, i is observed to be changed, right? It's going to be changed continuously. So at if the at the beginning it's z. So my current is measured is i of z. After a distance dou z, current will change to a new value which is i of z plus dou z. Right. Let's try to give a similar notation for the voltage. So here. I'm going to measure a voltage. Let me denote that as uh, say V of Z and over here the current will, uh, sorry, the voltage will definitely change. A new value of voltage we will be able to measure here denoted by V of Z plus dou Z. Okay, now again, so we have what is called as uh, it's a circuit, though it is a model of your circuit, right? In the model, it says that between the two conductors, I can observe a capacitance and I can also observe a conductance, right? So now let us try to write, right? Another point here. So this means, though this is an equivalent circuit, all the, uh, what you call, uh, all the equations that are supported by a, a actual circuit, will also be supported by the model circuit like this. This is a model circuit where actually this part is not there, right? But since you are modeling the actual transmission line by this, this circuit, whatever we have written here, should satisfy the uh, all the equations supported by the normal circuit, right? So that means I am supposed to, uh, so what are the fundamental equations or the rules to be followed by every circuit? One is called as, the Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, you should be able to perform the mesh analysis, node analysis, super node, super mesh, etc. Everything should be supported. Okay. So I am trying to apply that. Now I want to measure what is the current that is coming in this part. Right? Because it's it's though it is a I ideal case here, like uh, I'm assuming that there will be C and G, right? In my model so i should be able to apply the cur some current equation to get this correct so let me start the analysis of this circuit uh, from that point all right so i'm trying to measure uh, the current through the shunt uh, circuit or shunt you can even write a branch Okay, shunt circuit is, so you see which rule you can apply. There is a current entering, should be equal to current leaving the node, right? It's actually Kirchhoff's current law. So Kirchhoff's current law says current entering equal to current leaving. Current entering is Iz, right? Current leaving is one of, one of the current is I of Z plus dou Z. And the other current which enters here is what I'm trying to calculate, correct? So that is nothing but it's the difference of them. I of Z minus. So this is current is given by. I'll write here. So this is I of Z current entering minus minus I of Z plus dou Z. Now, so this is actually dependent on the voltage at that point, right? So this is something like this. This recall. I want to measure this current. So that current is actually equal to, I'll change the current, Wait just a second. Okay, so this is what I'm measuring. So right now I'm, I got an equation that is I of Z minus I of Z plus dou Z is this current. But this current is nothing but current flowing here plus current flowing here. So if the voltage is known, right, voltage is known, I can calculate the current through a capacitance. I have an equation, right? If the voltage is given, I can also measure the current through a conductance. So both of them I just have to find using the voltage and I just have to substitute. Okay, so let me write the current through the capacitance. Right, I can actually write this is equal to current through the capacitance plus current through the inductance. Uh, not inductance, my mistake. It's a conductance and the capacitance. Current through capacitance plus current through the conductance G. 
right so for a capacitance it is a c into do by do t of voltage correct rate of change of voltage c dv by dt is it is it are you able to recall right but you see the c is per unit length so i don't know the length i have to multiply by the length to convert c into the actual length c dou z correct are you okay now the c is the per unit length value right i am considering only dou z is as my length my length is not unit length correct it's a small length dou z so the actual capacitance becomes c dou z right into do by do t of of v of t voltage uh, not p my mistake it's z right because we are measuring velocity uh, the voltage at a point v of z are you okay that's the current plus if you know the uh, the conductance right current through a conductance is conductance into the uh, the voltage okay right so i is equal to my equation is v by r but 1 by r is g right gv right so this is the point if you want to measure i this is how you go but g is unit length i need to multiply that with dou z g dou z into v of z is it okay right all right so let me hold on to this equation for the time being this is equation number one now let us again we have modeled something so i should be able to apply uh say the kirchhoff's voltage law let's try to apply that right so i'm able to find that there is a loop right the loop is starting from here i move like this and i come back so this is the loop which I'm observing, right? So that means I can apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law for this complete loop, right? So that means, let's try to write this way. Uh, okay, I'll write. Or let me specify what equation I'm applying so that it becomes easy. So the Kirchhoff's voltage law to the outer loop, right, gives the following. So I start with V of Z, which is at the beginning. Okay, so that is V of Z. So V of Z, as I move to towards the, uh, along the outer loop, first I get a resistance. Correct. So resistance voltage drops, so it is negative, right? Re uh, the value of resistance is R into dou Z, dou Z, and the current is I of Z plus dou Z, right? This is because you see the component is very close to this part, all right? So I, I, again, this this works on complete assumption, right? There may be a question: Why not you assume it over here, right? Again, if I write RO on this side, I should be able to write in that way. Okay, that's fine. In that case, you see this C and G will be coming closer to V of Z plus dou Z. So you write the equations corresponding to that. That, that will be the, depends on the assumption. Equations will change. Okay, so, but the ultimate concept still remains same. All right, so R. Then you see inductor, there is a drop of voltage. So minus L into dou Z is the inductance value. If you want to measure the voltage across inductor, the equation is, so which equation you use? So if you want to measure voltage across inductor, this is L di by dt. So L is L dou Z, current is equal to dou by Uh, my, my mistake, it's not Z, right? It has to be dou by dou T, right? Perfect, perfect. So dou I of dou Z. Okay, then I move further, I can find that there is another voltage. Right? So again, with respect to this, okay, let me put a plus minus so that this becomes easy for you to uh, analyze so if you if you look at the basics of Kirchhoff's voltage law there is a statement saying that uh, what convention you should follow it says that if you consider something as a power supply 
that you consider as a plus minus right according to your need so let me assume this is the plus minus so uh, the convention says that always for a power supply current is going to flow from plus to minus through the circuit not through the battery okay for example this, this is what I, I mean so if i have a plus minus like this right this is a plus this is a minus of a battery current will not move here right not plus to minus here yeah it moves all the way around the circuit and reaches the minus so this is through the circuit that's why you see the i of z is marked in this way it's right plus moves around the loop through the plus and reaches the minus okay so that's the point that's the first point in the convention of the kvl now you see for any load so so far what we discuss is a source okay for any load so again this is this is the voltage so i have to so now now you see there is a, again there is, sometimes people get con confused here saying that okay you have a voltage source here why this is not a voltage source okay because we don't know what is connected to the other side of this right because it's just kept open something is there some circuit is there correct so that means the V of Z plus dou Z, you cannot consider that as a voltage source. It should, it should look like a, a load for you. It's not a source, it's a load which consumes your electricity. Right. So for a load, current flows from plus to minus through the load. So R is a resistor through the load plus to minus. L is a load through the load plus to minus. Same thing happens. Now V of Z plus dou Z is a load. So plus to minus through the load. So that's why it is this. Okay, now you take any random direction and move around your circuit. So let me assume that I am moving around this loop in this direction. That's the direction of movement before you apply the KVL. Okay, now if you move along this path, right, if the voltage increases from minus to plus, that is a positive quantity. You see here, V of Z is a positive quantity because of that. When you, it's, yes, it's negative quantity. You see, resistor inductor and V of Z plus dou Z, the voltage is, as you move along the given path, right, I understand that the voltage, right, correct, plus to minus means as you move around the loop, voltage reduces, right, so that's why I'm writing the plus, uh, the sign uh, like this, like this, okay, so minus R into something, minus L into dou Z into something, again, I should write minus V of dou Z. So algebraic sum of the voltages around the loop equal to zero. That's what is a KVL. Now I modify this. I just want the voltage relationship V of Z minus V of dou Z equal to take everything to other side. So R Z into dou by dou t of i of z plus dou z. Okay, now uh, let us assume uh, that. Uh, okay, let me hold on to this first. This is equation number two. Now uh, let me check what we can do further. Okay, I have, so okay. Anyway, so the the, the next part comes uh, with some more modification. So before that, I want to uh, stop here because it's a new concept, right? I need to make an assumption. What happens when uh, dou z is very small, right? So that part is going to come, right? Uh, maybe we'll resume that in uh, tomorrow's session.